this actually is something that we had discussed yesterday in form of a demo question also but to just sort of brush it up two altitudes of a triangle of 4 and 12 find the maximum length of the third altitude possible for the triangle now 4 and 12 are the altitudes we learned yesterday that the, the ratio of altitudes is the reverse of ratio of sides so if the altitude let's say the third altitude is x this x we need to find out the third altitude so the altitudes are 4 is 4 and 12 and x so the sides would be it is the reverse of this ratio 1 by 4 1 by 12 1 by x these will be the sides right if you want to put it in a more comfortable format then you can multiply again these are ratios so you can multiply it with a uniform number so let us multiply all 3 by 12x like the lcm basically so this would be 3x is to x is to 12 these would be the sides after that, once you get the ratio of the sides, again, there is no additional condition given if the triangle is obtuse or acute or whatever. Just it has to be a triangle, that's it. So for just a triangle, you know that sum of two sides should be greater than the third side. So basically, now the sum of two sides should be greater than the third side. Basically, to say that, okay, the sum if there's a larger side to the triangle, the sum of the other two sides should be more than that. So here we don't know x. So the largest can either be 3x or can be 12. So there will be like two very small cases. So if 12 is the largest, right, so basically then we are saying that 3x plus x should be greater than 12. So x should be greater than 3, right. And case 2, if 3x could also be largest, we know that for sure that x will never be the largest, but 12 or 3x could be the largest. So if 3x is largest, then basically x plus 12 should be greater than 3x or x should be less than so it can be greater than 3, it can be less than 6. So the multi maximum length of the third altitude possible will be 5. Again, this is less than, not less than, equal to. So just a small note. So the maximum length would be of the third altitude will be 5. Again, the concept was just one that the ratio of altitude being inverse to the ratio of the side. And then just using it. There. If they are given some additional condition like, okay, if this is an obtuse angle triangle or something, then we would have to, to put the, like, the condition of C square greater than A square plus B square, etc. So around that pretty straightforward. So let's just move to the next one. So this basically says that x, y, z are integer sides of an obtuse triangle. So here they have given an obtuse triangle. If x, y is equal to 4, how many values of z are possible? So now in these questions, right, which are like typically, they are more of algebra questions than pure geometry questions. Uh, because like there's no like diagram or there's no sort of theorem getting applied here. This is basically an algebra question, right? So x, y, z are integer side of an obtuse triangle. If x, y equal to 4, how many values of z are possible? Right. So now if x, y equal to 4, the third side is z, we need to we need to find the number of values possible for this. First things first, right. We know that the question is obtuse tri uh, triangle. So we know that to check an obtuse triangle, there's only one method, uh, basically, which is to see the cosine law of like the c square being greater than a square plus b square. Or basically the largest side square being greater than the some of the squares of the other two sides, right? So that is the only check, basically. So if we can get this into that format, then it will just be a question of inequality, basically, right? No, not even geometry. So obtuse triangle. So if x y equal to four, what can be the possibilities, right? So x y could be two or two, and x y could be one and four. Again, the order does not matter, obviously, because like yeah. 2 and 2 and 1 and 4. So now here, let's take the 2 and 2 case first. And here we'll take the 1 and 4 case. So basically, this is to say that the third side would be z here. And the order will not matter because it will the same triangle just like rotated in a different order, right? Like 1 and 4 and 4 and 1. This will be 1, 4 and z. So 2, 2 and z and 1, 4 and z, right? Let's look at 1, 4, and z first. So again, similar to what we had done in the previous question also, we don't know z. So either 4 can be the largest or z can be the largest. Right? So if, if for example, if z is largest, we'll see both cases. If z is largest, then we can write two things. And in every case, we can write these two things that 1 plus 4 will be greater than z. So essentially, z would be less than 5. This we know. 
also since z is the largest so basically z square will be greater than 1 square plus 4 square right this is again from like cos a is b square plus c square minus a square so this should be negative and that's how we we get that z square will be greater than this so z square will be greater than 17 okay so z will be greater than something like 4.1 or 4.2 whatever like it does not matter what the value is so this says that z should be greater than 4.1 or 4.2 this says that z should be less than 5 now if it says that the sides are all integers which is given so obviously there is no value possible here right so this scenario is not possible it's something to be greater than 5 and less than uh, uh, to be greater than 4.x i'm sorry and less than 5 to be at the same time not possible the other case could be that okay z is not the largest but what if 4 is the largest then we can write that 1 plus z is greater than 4 or basically z is greater than 3 and we can write that 4 square is greater than 1 plus 1 square plus z square or z square is basically less than equal less than 15 15 uh, so which means z is basically less than 3.9 or something here right, so this says that z is greater than 3 and then uh, this says that z is less than 3 point something so again this again sort of is contradictory so it will not suffice so four largest case is also gone so now this entire scenario is gone in the case of 2 2 and z now if there can only be two cases again if z is largest or if 2 is largest so let's say if z is largest and again just writing it down because like for a detailed solution uh, but otherwise like you can just directly sort of z is largest you just write one line and should be enough like in an exam setup like it will be much quicker now that you see what the method is so it will be uh, faster to do it there if z is largest then we know that basically 2 plus 2 should be greater than z or z is less than 4 also z square will be greater than 2 square plus 2 square which is 8 so basically z is greater than something around 2.66 or whatever right it does not matter like basically right um, but yeah 2.xx and z is supposed to be less than 4 so at least we get one value here which is z equal to 3 because it follows both the conditions at least we know that 2 2 3 is possible are there any other values possible let's see in this case if z is largest we get this value if 2 is largest then basically 2 plus z will always be greater than 2 so this gets automatically fulfilled and 2 square greater than 2 square plus z square this will never be fulfilled obviously right so even this case will not work so only one case will work if z is largest basically so 2 2 and 3 will be the side so how many values are possible there's only one value possible which is z equal to 3 so good question basically on building these scenarios as to finding the sort of the range of permissible values for a side of the triangle the only mistake that people make at times in a hurry is that they forget to apply the basic triangle equality here they just directly jump onto the obtuse part of it and start applying the cosine rule okay so this would probably be the last question on triangles and then we'll go to the theory of the next uh, topic right and uh, okay so it says that find the ratio of the areas of the small circle to the big circle of the given equilateral triangle so at least this is equilateral so that is a bit of a, this thing no sides are given nothing so basically they are only interested in the ratio of the areas of the small circle to the big circle that's it okay so first thing first right even before like uh, like sort of starting of the solution or putting pen to paper we know uh that for the radi like this radius we can readily find out if we assume the side to be a a and a we know that this is the in circle why do we know that this is the in circle and not this because the in circle need to touch all the three sides so this circle touches all the three sides of the triangle so this circle is the in circle this circle is not the in circle this circle will be an in circle to a triangle let's say if we form here if we do this so this basically if we draw a triangle apq by this line then yeah then this circle would be an in circle to this triangle apq right and again since this is 60 and 60 because of an equilateral triangle so this will also be 60 60 so even this triangle will be an equilateral triangle because angles are the same this is on parallel so basically this is the in circle to 
the big the original triangle and this is the encircled to sort of the smaller triangle so first thing is identifying that the second thing is if i have the sides as a right of the equilateral triangle we know that the in radius of an equilateral triangle is a upon 2 root 3 this we know so we know that basically this and again even if you forget it in like uh, exam scenario or something you can always readily derive it in radius is area upon semi perimeter area is root 3 over 4a square semi perimeter is 3a by 2 you can just divide it to get this result but basically this is the in radius to say that this is will be a, a upon 2 root 3 this will be a upon 2 root 3 okay so at least the radius of the big circle we already know which is this one a upon 2 root 3 is the radius of big circle how to find the radius of the smaller circle now as we discussed right that we draw a line parallel to the base and this also becomes an equilateral triangle and then this circle would be the encircle to this so basically like to say that okay uh, this this for the encircle to this for the encircle to this so whatever operations we have done on this we can do the same on this if i need to get the radius of this it would be good if i can apply some like the similar formula here directly to get the in radius but i don't know the sides of this equilateral triangle right if i had known that it it would have been immediate so let's say that the side of the triangle is b so always right it's a good idea to see that okay whatever you need to figure out what you need for that and then work towards that way so i know that we need the side so we'll try to figure out the side in this case which is like the b here now what do we know in this triangle we there is no way to directly figure out like this line also like we have drawn it parallel here to create this sort of a setup but we don't know the length of this what we can find out though is if you see that this equilateral triangle this line so we already have this part of the line if we just extend it to the top basically this entire line would be the height of the equilateral triangle this is the height why do i know that this is the height because it ends at a perpendicular on the side why is this a perpendicular because this is a tangent to the side. so this is the height of the total triangle height i know for a equilateral triangle of side a height would be root 3a by 2 this i know this total is root 3a by 2 i know that this portion is a by 2 root 3 plus a by 2 root 3 which is a root 3 so what will be this portion of it the remaining portion of this basically what i am trying to find out is that i don't know the side of this triangle but i can find out the height in terms of what we know if i find out the height i can use the formula for height to get the side so basically if i know this height i can let's say this height is 15 or, or 10 whatever then i can just say that okay b into root 3 by 2 will be 10 so i can find out b from that relation so basically to find out this height i need to subtract this portion from the total height so it is root 3 a by 2 is the total height and whatever gets covered here a by 2 root 3 plus a by 2 root 3 is a root a by root 3 right so this is the remaining portion this is the height of the smaller equilateral triangle so this becomes a by 2 root 3 so this entire height basically this height is a by 2 root 3 now it's fine now i know that the side here is b so root 3 by 2 into b should be a by 2 root 3 basically just the height of this equilateral triangle should be equal to the height that we derived here a by 2 root 3 so from this we get basically 2 into cancel out root 3 gets multiplied here so a is equal to cb or b is equal to a by 3 so this is the result here that this side would be one third of the original equilateral b is equal to a by 3 now it's it's just it's a simple so the in radius for this small triangle will be we know the formula for in radius is side upon 2 root 3 for an equilateral triangle this is also an equilateral triangle so it will be upon 2 root 3 which is basically a by 3 into 2 root 3 which is a by 6 root 3 so this is the in radius of this triangle so this is the smaller radius the big radius we know is a by 2 root 3 so the ratio is a by 2 root 3 and a by 6 root 3 so which is 3 is to 1 or small circle is to big circle would be 1 is to 3 you don't even need to calculate the in radius separately once you know that the side ratio is 1 is to 3 we know that these two triangles are similar the small and the big one so the ratio of the sides will be the same as ratio of the in radii So the ratio of side is minus two three. The ratio of the inner radius will also be minus two three. You could have directly just mark the answer as minus two three right at this point because of similarity. Make sense?
so these were some of the additional questions on triangles as such it seems that okay there's there's one more it seems there's one more yeah again a good application of basically that a figure which may have looked a bit sort of uh, intimidating in a way to start with but yeah once you figure out that okay this is the radius and you need to figure out this the only trick here the only catch so to say was to just figure out that you know that again uh, if you know the height of an equilateral triangle and then figure out the height and the height here was accessible because you knew the diameter of this so subtracting the diameter from the overall height would give you the height here height can be used to find the size height can be used to find the ratio of the size which is the same as the ratio of the ncdi so for a last question on the topic of triangles right so this is basically in triangle abc d is on bc such that ad is median and adc is 45 degrees further abc and dac are equal angles each is x find x so it looks like a short question and actually as a matter of fact it is but yeah basically again just to start on the diagram right so this is d is on bc such that ad is median okay even better so median means this is equal to this adc is 45 adc is 45 degree so this angle is 45 degree let's just write the outside further abc and dac are equal angle so abc is let's say x here and dac is also x here find x so okay so immediately like right on the making the diagram right i can see that there are two triangles getting made this angle is same as this angle and if i take the small triangle and the big triangle this angle is common so this is an immediate like right that again for similarity as we discussed yesterday right there are a couple of hints for similarity one where parallel lines are given one where the angles are equal given like in this case one where sides are given as like say proportional or the fourth case where you like it's not given but you have to derive some equalities in terms of angles or side proportionalities to derive them as similar here it is directly given that the angles are equal so immediately you can see that the small triangle and the big triangle have two angles in common the angle c will be common and this will be equal to it again the important part here is to write the names perfectly so it would be the smaller triangle you can write it as let's say anything adc and then now a here which is x is equal to x here so which is b so the first half of it would be b d here is 45 we don't know what d here is equal to but c we know is common so c and then the remaining half of it would be a so adc similar to bac right so basically to say that if we again write our usual side ratios it would be cd by ac equal to ac by bc right we need to figure out what angle and angle x is so basically and we know that basically cd will be half of bc because uh, d was the midpoint of this since ad is the median it's given in the question that ad is median right so basically this C, this bc will be equal to 2 cd this i can write right so from these two now i don't know the lens of ad and all right and i'm not interested in this also because the question doesn't need me to find that so we can use these two basically to say that ac square is equal to 2 cd square basically ac square is 2 cd square correct or to say that ac is okay so now we know this so basically ac and cd the ratio is root 2 now whenever you have this situation right that the side in, in this triangle if you see we know the ratio of two sides now we know the angle what can be the most ready to use funda here sin rule we know like one angle we know one angle we have to figure out so this is the game of two angles x and 45 45 we know and we know the side ratios so basically the sin rule says a by sin a b by sin b equal to c by sin c equal to 2r which we discussed yesterday but yeah essentially like whenever we have the ratio of two angles so we can say that a by b equal to sin a by sin b which is similar to the setup here we know the ratio of two sides in this triangle which is the a by b part sin a by sin b we need to find x we already know one angle here right so in this yeah somebody had a question sure. yeah uh, one more method i got that yeah uh, see the angle adc is 
so angle adb will be uh, 180 minus 45 that is uh, 135 yeah okay so uh, angle bad will be 180 minus 135 minus x yeah okay now uh, do the summation of all the angles abc is equals to 180 we don't know c C will be 180 minus 45 minus x. Okay, but then it will it will give us zero equal to zero, right? Because you use 180 and then you're again sending it back. So for example, if I do that, B is x. A entire thing is 45 minus x plus x, which is 45, and this is 130 like 135 minus x. So this will give me 180 in x and x will get cancelled basically. So you're using 180 and then applying it to get 180. But yeah, uh, definitely a good approach. uh would have worked if in case like some other angle was given so here the moment we see that in the triangle the side ratios we can we have derived here and the angles are sort of known and one needs to be figured out the sin log will hold you in good stead so basically this is ac over sin 45 equal to cd by sin x ac over sin 45 and So basically, this is AC by CD equal to sine 45 by sine x, which is one by root two times sine x. AC by CD we know from here is root two. So sine x is one by two, x is 30 degrees. Yes. So again, the point is to strike that basically, if the angles are given as equal, then similarity should be a first. Uh, To the top of the mind stuff, and then using that similarity, you can get the side ratios. Once you get the side ratios, and in the similar triangle, you have those side ratios here, and you can get the angle using the sine laws because uh, the sine law works off of the portion of angles and sides. So again, a good question. Using the fact that uh, like combining these two concepts here. Okay, so that sort of winds up our. question and answers on triangles we started from this this question and again the recording was missed so i'll just uh, you know write it down here for once so uh, this and this was parallel and people who have just you know who just know this very well they can just take a break for the next one minute and just writing this for the sake of folks who will go through the recording so triangle cd similar triangle cgf we start from the smallest C G by C by C G equal to C D by C F. C by C G was okay. This is B G. This is two. This whole thing is five. This is G is one. This is two. So C E by C G is two by three. And coming to the next triangle, then the this the bigger one. So C F G is similar to triangle C H G. C F G similar triangle this. So C F By C H, once again equal to C E by C G here, which is again equal to two by three. If we were to take some dummy value, so C D by C F we know is two by three. So if C D assumed value is two, then C F is supposed to be three. So this would be one. Now and C E by C G, C F by C H is again two by three. So C F is again if it is three, so C F by C H two by three. So C H should be four point five. So this is two three. So this will be one point five. So that three to four point five gives us the two five three, and finally we have this section left. So we have to find the sort of the triangles that have this portion in common. So which is the bigger triangle? We know this part, so this part we can readily take. So this will be the bigger triangle ABC, similar to triangle HGC. So say that basically uh, BC by GC. So this big upon this. Should be equal to AC by BC by GC. We know it's given that this uh, this is two, this is five. So BC by GC will be seven by five equal to AC by CH. So AC is nothing but AH plus four point five upon CH is nothing but four point five. So you can find AH from here. AH was nine over five, which is one point eight. So the ratio becomes 
1.8 is to 1.5 is to 1 is to 2. Multiply it with 10 to get some decent number, 18 is to 15 is to 10 is to 20. Again, it took longer to probably write it down step by step, but in an exam scenario, the moment you see such a setup, the first inclination should be, okay, these triangles are similar because of parallel lines, so this by this should be this by this. You directly get 2 by 3. This by this should be same as HC by the bigger one. You directly get the 5 by 7 or the 7 by 5, depending on which sequence you write it in, and that's it, basically. So you don't need to really write all these steps. This result should be a direct, like you should directly write this result, this result, and then directly just this result, right? Because you don't need to write like similarity equations and stuff here because they are all pretty direct. This by this, this by this, and so on. So yeah, and then we discussed a couple of additional questions uh, which have actually come in the exam as well, cone and the discuss loop. So it was mentioned that if, it, if it's a triangle or in a 3D setup, uh, one fourth of its height or let's say anything three sevenths of its height does not really matter and a second cut is made at let's say some level again so basically if we know that this height is three sevenths of this entire height we know that this triangle is similar because the cuts will always be made parallel to base so the triangles like stacked on one on top of the other right so the side ratio will be three to seven the area ratio would be nine is to 49 that they are basically the square of the area ratio Right, and so they'll ask you generally to find this area or like basically this area. So in a set, so basically what you have to basically do is that this area by this area would be dependent on the side ratio, size ratio square of that. So if this cut is made at a height of let's say three seventh of the total triangle, uh, let's say uh, three seven, so the area of this would be the small triangle would be nine by forty nine of total. After that, okay, you'll see then the next triangle that comes, again, start from the smallest, then move to the bigger one. The next triangle that comes, suppose they say that, okay, the second cut was made at a height of uh, like one seventh or something. Then this would be like one by 49 of the, like this. So then this area, then this height basically, if this cut was made at one seventh, then the remaining height is two seven. So you can get the area of this as four by 49. So just subtract them and you'll get the remaining area basically right so it's just a repeated application of similarity in a small triangle in a big triangle and uh, yeah so these sort of questions have come and so it's just helpful to to just have those handy one more question that used to come was the loop triangles example like okay and this is come in cat like directly midpoints joint and there's an infinite loop of triangles this is an equilateral triangle midpoints joined to form another triangle. Then again, the midpoints are joined to form the third triangle. Then again, the midpoints are joined to form the fourth triangle and so on and so forth. And all these are equilateral triangles. So find the, like if you do this infinitely, what will be the total area of all the triangles? If the outside area is, let's say, if the, if the side of the outside triangle is three, and this has been asked in GAT, right? So, so the original area of the outside triangle will be root three by four into nine. The next area would be one fourth of this. If I call this A1, so this then A2 will be equal to one fourth of A1. Why one fourth? Because the question said that they are joining the midpoints, the midpoints of the sides. So we know from basic proportionality theorem that the midpoint of the side, the line joining those, will be half of the third side and parallel to it. So if this is half of the third side, we know, so the area would be one fourth. So one fourth of A1. So, and when I say that this is half of this, so similarly, this will be half of this and this will be half of this because again, this will line, will again go by that theorem of okay, line joining two midpoints and parallel to the third side and half of it. A3 will be equal to one fourth of A2 and so on and so forth. So every time the area will keep getting one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. Why one fourth? Because square of two, the side ratio. In finite GP, you know the first area, the parent area is root three by four into nine, so nine root three by four. You know R, which is equal to the common ratio is one by four. You can find the sum of infinite GP by A upon one minus R. And this should be okay. So, and even if they would have given a different ratio, let's say they didn't give midpoint. They said that, okay, there's a line parallel such that basically like base, uh, there's a different ratio to it, right? Let's say two is to five or something. So this will be four by 20. The same ratio which we put as one by four will be like four by 25 in that case. They're doing the repeated application here then the next triangle also in 2 by 5 they'll cut then again 4 by 25 then again 2 by 5 then again 4 by 25 and so on and so forth so just the common ratio will change essentially but otherwise it's the same so this was another example 
uh, of application of like repeated similarity across different triangles so now that sort of winds up the discussion on triangles and any doubts will just flash through this uh, question once again you we'll see uh, again this particular question we had done a variant earlier as well but yeah cool so that winds up our discussion on triangles and now the next topic so to say so triangles was a pretty like a vast sort of a heavy duty topic with a lot of concepts right inside of it the next topic we'll take up is a, is a is a relatively shorter topic but still with some key concepts there which is the topic of polygons